Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Dave. Well, what causes a bunion? Now we've already discussed what a bunion is. We defined that already. So if you haven't watched that video, please go back and watch it so that you're on the same page as I am. Now we're talking about what causes what I defined already as the classic bunion. And in order to do this, we do need to understand some basic anatomy of the foot. So we're gonna use this foot model again, and we're gonna look at the big toe here, and we're gonna look at this first metatarsal here. Now, when you look at this bone here, you will see that there are two joints associated with it. You have this joint here, and then you have this joint here. This joint allows your big toe to go up and down like that. This joint here allows the first metatarsal to also go up and down like this. However, what's cool about this joint is that it has a second range of motion. Not only does it go up and down, all right, but it can also go back and forth like that. And these two joint, these two ranges of motion occur at the same time. Now, when you put your foot down on the floor, you have to absorb shock. And so what happens? Your arch goes down. When the arch goes down, the first metatarsal head starts to rise when compared to the base. It's still on the floor, but relative to the base, it is now elevated. Okay? However, the range of motion here allows that first metatarsal to not only go up, but also out. And the same thing happens on the other side. The fifth goes in the other direction. You see? Well, this is normal. And this is why you'll probably remember when you were younger, you go to the shoe store and there was somebody there to help you. Now, you may be very young, you don't even remember this, but there was somebody there to actually help you. They'd pull out one of these things. This was called a, it's called a Brannock device, all right? And they would get your size and then they'd go back into the stock room and they'd select your shoes according to that size and they'd try it on your foot. And then what would they have you do? They'd have you stand on the floor. And when you stood, your arch went down and the first and the fifth metatarsal heads would go up and they would go out. And then they'd reach down and squeeze your forefoot to see if the shoe fit. It's normal, okay? But what's not normal is when that arch goes down so far that there's just not enough time in your gait cycle to get that arch back up before you leave the ground. You see, when you push off the floor, you don't want that flexible foot that you hit the floor with. You want a rigid foot. And to get that rigid foot, you need to raise the arch up. The other thing that happens by raising the arch up, it allows your big toe to get over the top, all righty? If your arch is still down, when you step forward, what's gonna happen? Okay, the foot is going to be very flexible, so you're going to have a weak push-off. Number two is the big toe won't be able to get over the top because of that metatarsal head because the metatarsal head's sticking up here. And so the big toe bangs into it. It can't get over the top and it jams, and that's how you get arthritis. And then lastly, as you step forward, if that arch is not all the way back up, okay, and the head, is not, and the head of that metatarsal is not all the way back down, then it's going to be, the head will be sticking up and it will be sticking out like this. And then what will happen? Well, the muscles are going to pull this big toe over here, and this happens step after step after step for 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 years, maybe longer, and we have a saying, form follows function. If you continue to do this over and over and over, eventually that bone is going to stay there. And that's what causes a bunion. So it's not your shoes. The shoes aggravate the bunions, but they don't cause it. You know, there are many people around this world that have terrible bunions and they don't wear any shoes at all. No, what causes the bunions is one's inability to raise the arch and lower the head of this first metatarsal all the way down before they leave the floor. So it's genetics. It's hereditary, okay? Your mom and dad, they gave it to you. Or maybe it was your grandma or your grandpa. I don't know. Okay, but somebody in your family left you this inability, or not you, somebody who's got a bunion, the inability to raise that arch all the way back up before you leave the floor. So that's what creates a bunion. All right, well, now that we know that, we can go forward and we can discuss some of the conservative treatments for a bunion. So that's the next video, and you can click on that. I'm Dr. Dave. This is Frugalvote.